All right, so here we are with the folding stretch shirt Mark II. But what we're going to document is how we make the hinge. The hinge is the most important and difficult part of making a folding stretch shirt. Get it out of tape, which is not necessarily designed for folding. So well, the hinge that we're making right now is between one of the roof pieces and one of the short sides. And this fold is going to have a range of motion greater than 180 degrees, about 240 degrees. So uh, this is not one of the simple hinges. So it's a good one to start with because we're working with two of the smaller pieces and we're working with one of the more complex folds. The reason it goes 240 degrees is because we fold the pointy piece all the way down um, and then when we unfold it, we're actually folding it so that the pointy piece is down that way at 60 degrees. So this one inch surface right here and this one inch surface to be mated with uh, a tape span that is an inch across. So we're going to go ahead right now and measure out that distance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the edge of this throwaway piece, the scrap, which is exactly one inch. So there we go. We've got our two pieces lined up for the first piece of tape. And we've got some tape already cut out. Now this tape is pretty close to exactly as long as we need to be because we do not need to fold it over. So we're just going to drop it directly into place. It sticks pretty quickly, so nail it on the first attempt is the only option. So now we've got this, this piece of tape down with a one inch gap between the two pieces. The next part is to fold the point into the storage position. We'll go ahead and call it that. Now we're going to have a big tape bubble sticking out the end bubble. If we go ahead and line up the edges of the two pieces, you'll see that the tape bubble is about half an inch. That's kind of what we were shooting for. Uh, go ahead and bring it down. There you go. Now you can see the tape bubble. Bada bing. Basically, what we're going to do is we have six inch tape. There's two inches of edge that we need to tape over and then there's one inch of the hinge that we know that leaves an inch and a half for each board is about how much uh, we'll be anchored to. So we'll go ahead and anchor this to about an inch and a half. Alright, so we just laid down the first piece of tape. Now we pull top piece that we're taping forward. We've got the two pieces. We pulled the top piece that we're working on all the way forward. That allows us to tape the edge because we're going to go over that edge completely. It's an inch forward compared to the bottom piece. That's because we want to tape that edge right there. Uh, we're going to drop that tape down and uh, cover that. And then we will have to cover the bottom of the tape bubble and then we will cover that edge. Um, after we're done with the tape bubble, what we're going to do is we're going to slide that all the way back. So we're going to slide the top back in, back two inches so that an inch of the bottom is for, uh, exposed. And then we will tape the edge of that and then we'll curl it over to the bottom of the piece. And we'll lift the stack and keep pulling tightly so we keep the top fold down and while you go over with your fingers, I'll hold up the stack. Uh, hold on to the corner and go on with the other finger, your other hand. Yeah. So now we've smoothed out that seam. Hopefully it was in frame. If not, it's not that important. All we're doing is squishing tape. So we're going to slowly grab your point and pull away. 
what we're going to do is we're going to slowly work this with our fingers. And what I'm doing right now is I'm sticking the two pieces of tape together. This is the hard part. It does not need to be perfect, but as close as you can get. It is always better than far, 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 far. And just work that slowly towards the other edge. If you have to retape, that's okay. This is not the strongest seam that needs to be made. Actually, all we're doing is we're protecting the other piece of tape, which is going to bear most of the load. Hey, you did a better job than I did. Okay. All right, let's take that down. And look at that. Did it on our first try. So let's go over that piece of tape. I'm going to grab the camera. All right, so here's our first seam. As you can see, we ended with this board shifted down. If we move it forward, they line up perfectly with an inch gap. We can bend it all we like. We can see a lot of light through it. Perfectionists are going to say, whoa, we're going to get some, we're going to lose some of our R value or whatever. And I'm like, well, you're going to lose some of it, but you're not going to lose much of it. That is your hinge. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it through its full range of motion. Here is it in its stored position. And now I'm going to put it in its installed position. And there we go we have ourselves a 240 degree hinge. Simple seam is pretty easy. We lay the pieces out in a line. Ah, we've got the main panel here, and we've got the end panel here. We want to give it a little bit of a gap, not much. Less than a quarter inch. There we go, that's good. Drop this down. I always do the simple stuff last because it's harder to mess up. That can happen. We're working on the inside. Um, all of that will be fairly evident if you play with the model a bit, just print it out. And then we flip it 180 degrees. And then we take a piece of tape. Then what we do is we lift up this corner piece. Boom. Now we only want two inches past the edge. Okay. All right, good. Now here's the hard part of the easy seam. We have to lift on edge. Now what you can't see is that a roof piece is already on. We went ahead and did all the hard seams first. So you have to push the roof piece out of the way, just long enough to tuck the corner of the tape underneath it. It's not imperative that it be airtight at this point, because obviously once you get ready to actually install it, you have to go over it with some tape in anyways. You want some tape to tape contact. Oh. Now we're done. Hold it up. Hold it. This is the closed seam. The simple seams do not need to have a range of motion greater than 180 degrees. In fact, I believe this one only has uh, 150 degrees of motion that it needs to go through, but it can go through 180. That's it.